What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. You know I got another banger for you, so kick back, relax, and come take a ride with your boy. Man, y'all showed so much love on that top five potential breakout stars for South Carolina. I had to bring y'all another edition of it, man. So part two... We're going to talk about five breakout players potentially next season for Gino Ariyama and UConn. They've got a great recruiting class coming in. They have a nice transfer class coming in, and they bring back a load of talent. Now, some of these players have already established themselves. Others are freshmen looking to establish themselves that I think can really get active and make an immediate impact. So, y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel about everything afterwards. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. And join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. So I feel like I wouldn't be doing this list justice if I didn't start off with the number one player in the country, Sarah Strong, as a potential impact player and just first like break potential breakout player as well, sticking with the title, man. Number one player in the country, big, physical, hybrid forward, can play on the wing, can play down low, is a monster on the glass, great touch around the rim can shoot it, just fundamentally sound, high intangibles, y'all. We're talking about one of those hybrid forwards that Coach Ariyama, one of the Maya Moors that he loves to utilize in a bevy of ways. She comes in and starts at that four. I think she has a chance to be the national player, national freshman of the year. I'm going to just put it out there right now, man. When you talk about versatility, a potential generational talent, can shoot the three, nasty in the pick and roll. Like, whoever, if K.K. Arnold's running, the point and is on that pick and roll or if it's another player we'll talk about that, that transferred in that's running that pick and roll with Sarah Strong, whether it's Paige Beckers running that pick and roll with Sarah Strong, she's going to be able to pop out. She's going to be able to abuse smaller defenders down low, get her shot off against taller competition as well. She's going to be able to use her body. She's physical. She's strong. She's going to be an animal in that paint. I don't think the physicality of the college game is going to bother her at all. I think she's going to be a bruiser down low. She's a good shot blocker. But I think her most notable asset that's going to help is her playmaking ability. Elite court vision. Can get the outlet passed out. Can go coast to coast. Can dish it and just set up teammates. She's a capable passer out of the post as well. Eyes in the back of her head. Having another playmaker potentially in this starting lineup is just monumental for UConn. Having a post presence, they didn't, like, Leah Edwards was good. She was playing more so out of position a lot last year at the five, though. I think UConn will be much bigger this year, and we'll get into the reason why later. But Sarah Strong, um, you know, multi-time state champion, Gatorade player of the year, um, McDonald's All-American currently playing for Team USA right now. Um, you know, just all the accolades she's won at every level, and I think she's gonna help. She's the one, one of the first number one players to come since AZ Foot. You know, it's been a couple of years since UConn got the number one player. She's gonna come in, and now I'm not gonna say bring back UConn to life because they just made a Final Four run, but she is definitely bringing them back that juice that they had a few years ago. I'll definitely say that. But that was our first look. Another player who I mentioned we we got to talk about, and I wanted to bring not bring her up too prematurely in that pick and roll situation, but Ivy League Player of the Year, Caitlin Chen, coming over, man, is huge. They lose Nika Mule, who was the lead assist player playmaker for this group this past season, the steady presence at point guard, knockdown three-point shooter, lockdown defender. You go out and get one of the best possible transfers, period, in Chen. And you're bringing experience, you know what I'm saying? She's a four-year player. You're bringing a player that understands that March basketball is different than the rest of the year. She's been to the NCAA tournament. She's a capable playmaker, a steady presence at point guard, a veteran leader for this group that can come in and really stop these. Because the thing with UConn, man, we know these injuries happen, right? 
KK Arnold, Ashlyn Shea, guards like that were thrown into the fire and when they were not expecting to play the minutes they played. Now, this allows them to have more depth and more reliability at the point guard position, man. It was good that those freshmen got to take those strides those strides and get that playing time because that's invaluable, those minutes. And they performed well. You got to give it to them. They grew a lot. They grew exponentially. Um, but now having Chin in the lineup, you you find a direct replacement for Nika Mule, a guard that's going to be a pass first, move the basketball. I mean, the numbers don't lie. Chin on the season last year averaged 15.8 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and 4.9 assists, shooting 48.8% from the field. She also had her best shooting year from the three-point line, shooting over 32% last year. And the only thing is, she's definitely got to cut down on the turnovers. But there will be a lot less pressure on her, man, to handle the rock. Like, there will be, this will be the most talent that she's played with ever. But she's, uh, you know, played at Princeton. Um, I think just having that steady leadership, that presence, because we were kind of wondering, like, I think Nika Mule leaving was kind of a surprise, but, you know, the situation she's in now is incredible. She's finally able to play basketball, and she's playing with three of the best players in the WBA. So it worked out, first-round draft pick. But we were kind of wondering who's going to fill that void. You know, they got Zavell coming in as well, um, the freshman guard, but we were kind of wondering who was going to, you know, take the reins of this thing depending on injuries and who's going to be back now you get chin who's ready immediately and a lot of those players that were battling injuries last year don't have to necessarily rush back i thought this was a must get piece for uconn i absolutely thought that this was one a perfect fit the system the competitiveness the geographic location for like everything worked out so this was a major major domino for uh uconn man um, speaking of size, because I was saying earlier how I think they'll be playing much bigger, Jaina L. Alfie, who they've been waiting on, uh, the first player ever from Egypt, a member of the Egyptian national national um, you know basketball team, uh, six five, six six, just big, physical, biggest player on the roster. They needed her at the five last year. They needed her, highly touted recruit. Um, has battled injuries and enrolled early, but, and they're still waiting on her, man. She's still a project, but if they can get her healthy, she's super skilled. She can go in there and grab boards, block shots, and be that anchor potentially in the paint for them. And when you talk about a breakout player, they need her. They absolutely need her size, her strength, her physical presence. They need her. They don't have a lot of size on this roster. Ice Brady got some minutes this past season, and I think – you know, she didn't make this list, but she's another potential player that showed a lot of upside that can help them out at the four or the five spot. But they need El Afi to really, really turn into a star, man. I think she has all the capability to do so. She just needs time. She needs reps, and she needs experience. I mean, she's basically still a freshman on the court. You know what I'm saying? And she's been there two years. So it'll be interesting to see if they can tap into that. And, you know, it seems like they, they've they revamped their athletic training staff, their strength and conditioning. They've revamped some things, made some changes, which is necessary, man. Because people, I did a live chat, I did a live stream last night talking about Caitlin Clark and a bunch of other WNBA games. And people were saying, you know, Paige Becker's being the number one pick next year for the squad at Golden State. They were talking about her injuries and she's fragile. And I'm like... Half the team was lost in the season to injuries, man. I don't think it's the players being fragile. I think it's the strength and conditioning as well as their health team, their medical staff, um, putting in these putting these players in in the positions to succeed. I think it's the main thing right now, and that's why changes had to be made. But Beckers came back and had a monster season, maybe her best season in college, you know, after two years off. So shout out to her. Um but, yeah, I think they need Jana to really just become the player that they thought she would be when she first got to UConn. If she can stay healthy, watch out. I think she's talented. I think that she feels an immediate need. And if you can have her at the five, have Sarah Strong at the four, and that is a potentially dynamic front court. And I think they will complement each other pretty well. Uh, moving on to another player that I think could be a breakout star for this group.
the freshman wing Morgan Shelley, a big wing, a big guard that I've become more familiar with her game in the past couple of months, man. But she's won with Team USA. She's won state titles. She's won Gatorade Player of the Year, um, or, you know, for her state. She's just been an incredible presence of in these all-star games, really getting her shots off, really operating really well in the pick and roll. Um, just a big wing, man. I love like what UConn does with those guards with size, those six foot plus guards. I'm um, just skilled, can really, really shoot the three, can get to the cup. And I think her passing has come a long way. Her playmaking has come a long way. And depending on how this backcourt shapes up, it could be hard for these freshmen coming in to carve out some minutes in this backcourt with so much returning, man. It's a lot of talent. I mean, you got AZ coming back. You got Ashlyn Shade. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? You got KK Arnold. You got just Paige Beckers is coming back as well. You got Caden Samuels. You got Aubrey Griffin coming back, who's also both these players I think could be potential breakout players this come, upcoming season as well. Uh, that backcourt is deep, maybe the deepest in the nation. And it's going to be hard to carve out minutes for a lot of these players, but I do think they have a lot of pieces that do a lot of different things. And for Zabel or uh, for Chelly, for them, if they can come in and shoot threes and make hustle plays, that'll be their quickest way to really get on the court. But there's a lot in this backcourt. But I love her game, man. I think she's going to be talented. She's a future player that's going to impact this program and be a starter for multiple years. Um, with her size, 6'2", can really shoot the basketball, can initiate offense for other players, playmate, you know what I'm saying? She guards, she's tenacious on defense, like she really gives a lot of effort on that end. Um, so does Isabel. So I'm excited to see. I think these fre I think this talented freshman class, all three of these players have a chance to make an impact, but it may just be down the line. Rounding out our group, Aubrey Griffin, who decided to come back, use her extra year of eligibility, man. The veteran who was having a heck of a season last year, man, especially down the stretch. She was on a tear. She had some really big games before she went down with that injury. We saw her minutes get cut down. She went from 30 and a half to 22, but still averaged nine and a half points per game, six rebounds, and more assists than she's ever averaged, and more steals than she's ever averaged. She was locking up on D as well, um, more blocks than she's ever averaged as well. Um, you talk about a senior that does a lot of good things. First off, man, she may be the best slasher on the team. She can absolutely get to the cup. She shot 54.7% from the field this past season. When you talk about, and that was her best shooting season so far, she can get to the cup. She had some major games for this group. She is also a lockdown defender. She really gets after it on the defensive end. And she was there, and she was really, like, I feel like one of their emotional leaders for this group. A veteran presence with versatility, great size on the wing. That was a mismatch problem for a lot of players, and she really found her stride in that, like, string of four or five games before she went down with that injury, man. And that was kind of like the last straw, almost, it felt like. It was just like, dang, everybody that starts getting off for UConn ends up injured. But I think she comes back next season. Maybe they have her at the three next year. Like, there's a lot of different lineups Coach Ariyama can throw out, a lot of different matchups that he can take advantage of. But I think I, thought, I think it's big that Griffin decided to come back. I think that she's a player. She's big time. Um, and she was getting back to that form of last year that we were used to seeing. We saw her lose eight minutes per game, and her scoring only went down like a point and a half. You know what I'm saying? She was more efficient. She was really, really good. Like, they cannot keep her out of the lane. She's so athletic, so silky smooth. She was one of my favorite players last year to watch in all the college basketball. Um, so I think she comes back. Now, I know there was, like, Caden Samuels could have easily made this list as well. Ice Brady. There were a few players that definitely could have made this list. But these were just five, I thought, that we would focus on, man, that have a lot of potential, that have seen their seasons derailed, or they haven't played a college game yet. Or they're transferring in because uh, their league getting off for grad, grad seasons. So I just want to say, man, I appreciate everybody tuning in, locking in. Let me know in the comments who are some other players we should be looking at and what other teams should we break out next, next time for top five breakout players. What other teams should we be talking about? Y'all let me know. Holler at me in the comments. Y'all know I'm always reading them, listening, tuning in to what y'all got going on and how y'all feel about the situation. That's a wrap for us. Make sure for, for y'all to stay up with all the latest and the greatest. You hit that subscribe button. Until next time, hey, I'm out.